Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of Series 2 of Quark Software's Close the Content Loop webinar series, our regular talks about all things content lifecycle management. My name is Emerson Welch and I'm here with my colleague Sam Courtney. Hey Sam. Hey folks, it's great to be back. Good to see you Sam. And I'm sure you'll join me in welcoming our guest speaker Jack Molisani to Close the Content Loop. Based out of California, originally from Hawaii, Jack is a recognized expert in content strategy, and many of you are aware of his industry influence, in particular, his successful LavaCon conference for content strategy professionals and his fellowship in the Society for Technical Communication. Welcome, Jack. Well, hello, and thank you for the invitation. Great to be here. It's a privilege to have you. And as you're joining us, it seems only right to focus our talk on the strategic and planning side of content lifecycle management. So today's question on close the content loop is, can enterprises realistically execute their content strategies at scale? So let's kick things off by asking you a simple question, Jack. How many B2B organizations do you think have laid out a solid content strategy? The reason I ask is because according to Forrester's 2022 state of B2B content survey, 46% of them lack a defined and repeatable approach to content planning. Does that stat shock you? Ha, um, yes. Um, I think the operative word you just said is solid content strategy. Hmm. I believe many organizations believe they have a content strategy and it's so much easier to plan one than to execute one. So I think that number is high. I really do. Right. Hi. Interesting. So what do you think is vital in a content strategy? I mean, where, where do enterprises start and how do you kind of like get things moving? Uh, it's interesting. There's two ways to approach content strategy from the bottom up or the top down. And people in the trenches know they need an enterprise content strategy. And by the way, when I said that number was high, I meant there was not that many people actually doing it. So the number is probably lower, as you said. Right. Um, the most important thing is where do you start is coming up. Look at your business goals. What are the boardroom objectives? How can your content strategy move those objectives forward? Because you may see your organization needs a content strategy, but unless you tell the C-suite, the CEO, the CFO, the CTO, technology officer, why you need a unified content strategy, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, absolutely right. Totally agree with that. I mean, yeah, I mean, let's be straight up here as well. What's the what's the number one mistake that organizations consistently make when building a content strategy, do you think? I would say not getting buy-in from all the organizations or silos, quote unquote, um, involved. It's easy to say we need to do this. But it's really hard to get another organization to do it when there's when they're saying what's in it for me. So the number one thing you need to do is get that champion that is above all those organizations or silos within your organization and have them organized from the top down. Yes, you must do this. We are doing this. And this is the benefit of why we're doing this. Yeah, that makes absolute sense. Everything connects back up to the business goals at board level, doesn't it? That's that's really important. And I mean, just having, you know, having those kind of mistakes consistent within the organization I and mean, how, how does that really restrict their ability to deliver content at scale? How is it going to hold them back? All right. I'm pausing here because you asked almost three separate questions in that one question and I'm going to take them apart. One, okay. there's delivering content, there's delivering content at scale, and then there's doing it seamlessly and with quality and invisible to the, uh, I'm not, I don't want to use the word user, let's use the word customer. Right. All right. If you do not have your content in a authoring system that's responsive to the individual customer, so you can spit that kind of content out when you want it, where you want it, on the device you want it, in the language you want it, you are never going to be able to scale because there are too many moving parts, too many people involved. You have to have that core content management system in place. 
absolutely. I mean, again, I, I could I can see the differences there. It's so Sam, just thinking in the context of our new customers when we when we talk to them in the discovery phase in particular. I mean, does this sound familiar? I mean, what are the key challenges they face where um, you know the content strategy is so important. Yeah, I, I believe most companies just don't appreciate the value of a content management strategy. They often haven't done their due diligence for building content based on some fundamental principles such as reuse, component assembly, and the use of attributes and metadata. So we've used these same principles for decades in software development, so it isn't a foreign concept. Structured authoring provides a foundation for adopting principles like these to create that strategy. Right, Sam, yeah. Structured authoring, you know, it's got to be right at the core of this. Jack, you can see this from the top down and bottom up, as you said. You've been a fellow of the Society for Technical Communication, as well as driving LavaCon, working closely with, with technical writers and subject matter experts in their industry fields. How important is structured authoring in an enterprise content strategy? I mean, would you would you be full of confidence for an organization's scalability if you saw a content strategy that didn't have structured authoring within it? You can't see me nodding my head and smiling here. Um, I want to pause for just a second and define some terms because not everybody in our audience might be familiar with this. So one word is structured authoring. Structured authoring is when you um, separate the formatting of the content from the authoring of the content. By putting the content in a publishing platform without formatting, it's then formatted when it's published, not when it's written. The second word that came up was metadata. Metadata is information about something, right? So you may be looking at a photograph or a diagram and the metadata may say this is for this product line, this version. So when you're going to search for something, you can find it in your content management system. So now that we've defined some terms, let's go back to your question. I do believe structured authoring is key. One of my favorite speakers, um, Karen McGrain, who wrote Content Strategy for Mobile, did a talk once where she said, um, content in the zombie apocalypse, where every time there's a paradigm shift, where we went from paper to PDF, and management's going, the sky is falling, the sky, no, the sky's not falling. All right, oh, now we got to do watches. The sky's, no, as long as you've got your structured content and structured authoring, it doesn't matter what the next big thing is. So yeah, I really believe structured authoring is key. Yeah, okay. It's critical for several clear reasons there, Jack, and and great explanation on on the terms. That really appreciate that. I mean, and um, what's the general feeling out there in the market right now, Jack, when it comes to structured authoring? I mean, what's what's evolving? What can you see? Ooh, ooh, loaded question. Um, I'm seeing that a lot of companies want to jump into structured authoring, but don't know where to start. Right. There are so many complexities. And as Sam said earlier, if you don't do a content audit, you don't even know what you have, right? So adopting a content management system that can fit a small to medium-sized company gives you a sufficient return on your investment to make it possible, especially if you're doing um, translation. That's where you can see a even greater return on investment by moving your legacy content out of whatever publishing system you're using into a publishing platform that is structured based. Yeah, I mean, translation, regionalization and personalization, the, the, the three of those sort of go together really, don't they? But um, that is such a, such a huge part. And for people that we speak to, our existing customers and, and new prospects we have discoveries with, that's that's certainly at the top of, of their wish list. And, and here's a follow up question to ask which I know comes up in those kinds of conversations we have, is um, it's all about XML schemas. I mean, let's just pull that back for a minute. Why is a schema so important in, in the first place? Well, again, let's define what a schema is. Um, we start throwing out these big words like taxonomy, where taxonomy is just a hierarchy of things. Like, for example, a typical schema could be all things on the planet are animals, vegetables, or minerals. And then you break that down. Same thing with the schema is when you're laying out how is the data stored within your content management system. There's pros and cons for having a great schema because there is no such thing as a great schema. 
right? It's an evolving, living thing because organizations acquire organization, other organizations. Oh, we didn't plan for that. Oh, we don't have a field for that. So yes, you want everybody in the organization using the same structure, but it's gotta be flexible enough that you can extend it, which where the X in XML comes from is extensible um, to these schemas. So then when things change, you're still bowling within your lane, but the lanes can get bigger as the needs arrive. So some, I guess with with that in mind, and, and there's obviously pros and cons to to schemas. Um, you know, when you talk about things like DIT for one thing and S1000D for another, um, having having a schematic agnostic approach to structured authoring, so being able to, if you like, dance between different schemas depending on the use case that you have, um, it sounds like it's got to be the best way forward. Is you is not putting all your eggs in one basket. Sure, sure. So you might consider putting all your eggs in one basket with, for example, having only a, a data architecture, for example, but you could still export in a data format from Quark smart content if you want, which provides a much lower complexity level for the end user. So smart content is also more flexible for authors to produce business documentation, as well as technical documentation, like for financial reports, investment prospectuses, clinical studies, product data sheets, et cetera. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And, and back to you, Jack, on this one. Do, do your technical writers you work with have a, a particular attitude towards XML schemas? I mean, how much do they want to learn about it, expand their minds on it? Or would they rather just say, no, I just want to write? Oh, they just want to write. The uh, last thing they want to do is dive into a schema. Um, or they get so focused on the schematic approach that they're not writing. So there's got to be that happy medium. And as Sam was saying, the less you have to be a programmer, the more productive you are as a writer. Totally, totally makes We're hearing exactly the same things. Um, okay, so times are changing. Flexibility is key. And the more of the younger generation coming through, they're expecting the technical aspects, that schematic aspect to, to be more and more hidden under the hood. So Sam, can you give us a, a real life example of how a low code, no code structured authoring tool um, has helped deliver a content strategy at scale? Sure, Emerson. I'm gonna focus on the aerospace and defense manufacturing sector uh, for this one. Many organizations in this sector tend to miss the larger picture in terms of planning and adopting the right technology to help them efficiently create and manage compliant business critical documents, such as standard operating procedures with speed and scale. They also might not have their centralized content operations into a single source of truth component content management system. And therefore they struggle with content complexity, duplication of effort, redundancy of information and uh, regulatory compliance. Yeah, all, all critical things that will cause problems at that enterprise level. So how has um, Quark Publishing Platform worked for them? So now their technical writers can author structured componentized content in a low code, no code user interface. They generate XML metadata automatically, and this allows them to reuse content in all their global documentation in whatever output format that they choose. They don't need to be XML trained or have system architecture knowledge. They just write the content as the subject matter or domain expert. Perfect. Yeah, that exactly sort of explains the kind of story and, and, and to what you were saying, Jack, is, yeah, they, they just want to write. So great. All right. Well, let's look at three sort of takeaways that we that we've covered off really and really important from here. So first off, Jack, we know that content strategies must evolve to be scalable and, and content strategies have changed, right? Oh, absolutely. In the old days, quote unquote, all we had to be concerned about was our own little content fiefdom, for lack of a better term, where as the importance of structured authoring, um, and we'll talk about that next, became apparent, more and more 
silos again within the organization have to be unified and all using the same terminology, all using a common vocabulary, all reusing the same content. That That is a far greater challenge than just you and a colleague using the same set of words for the product. Sure, when you, when you factor in omni-channel publishing, you know, into this as well, that it takes on a whole new level, doesn't it? So, um, so really, what we're saying is, is structured authoring is is more important than ever at the heart of a of a strategy. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you remember, we used to just publish to PDF and throw it out there, and then we published to HTML pages. But now nobody can read a twenty two hundred page manual on an iWatch or whatever watch you're using at the time. So you have to write in micro content, make that content findable, searchable, readable, and that takes structured authoring. It does. Yeah, absolutely. Findable, a really key word there as well. Um, and thirdly, so we've, we've, we've sort of mentioned this a few times, but it's just really important just to remind ourselves of it, is that um, just let the technical authors write. Um, I'm nodding my head again. I have to remember everybody can't see me. Um, it's interesting back in the day when we had writers and editors and typists and programmers and no, we're running lean and mean and we need to get this deadline done, published and out the door. I don't have time to be learning the intricacies of a new programming language. I need to write. Writers need to write. That's what we do best. Keep the coding to, for someone else. Yeah, absolutely. Just keep the headspace clear. Great takeaways, Jack. Thanks. OK, so let's um, let's have a look at um, what's happening in the, the Quark product world. Sam, would you like to give us an update on um, Quark Publishing Platform Next Gen first? Sure, Emerson. Our latest release provides a powerful collaboration feature which supports interoperability for web authoring and Microsoft Word authoring. In QPP Next Gen, subject matter experts and technical writers just focus on writing. They don't. They have the unique choice of using Microsoft Word or a web browser to write from, and don't need to learn the complexities of XML schemas or content modeling, as XML metadata and tagging is automatically generated in the background for the authors. It's a much more modern way to write complex content, and they can collaborate with co-authors and stakeholders between the word and the products. Thanks, Sam. So that sounds like a great new addition to our authoring capabilities. Uh, and th that's available right now, isn't it? So, uh, Jack, why don't you tell us a, a bit about what you're working on right now? Well, it's in the pilot phase. One of the things we discovered that while there are newsletters for the financial industry and structured and authoring knowledge bases, there was no one place to learn about content strategy. So we snagged allthingscontentstrategy.com. We launched a newsletter four weeks ago called All Things Content Strategy. And if you go to the, the content strategy group on LinkedIn, you can subscribe since we're still in the pilot phase and then we will have a single source where you can learn about authoring systems, the, the, the pros and cons of going headless CMS. Um, is structured authoring right for you? It'll be a great resource tool, but it's still in the pilot phase right now. Sounds brilliant. OK, well, uh, we'll, we'll keep our eyes on when that actually launches and goes live. And, uh, and we're looking forward to, to see how things develop over the course of this year. And, and we'll keep sort of speaking and working together and talking about your conferences and so forth. So um, it was great to have you on Close the Content Loop, Jack. Thanks again for joining us. You're welcome, Amber Simmons. It's been a pleasure. And Sam, thanks for giving us such valuable customer context as always and all your great feedback. Thanks, Emerson. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Look out for the next episode of Close the Content Loop. And don't forget to subscribe to our Quark Publishing Platform Next Gen YouTube channel for all the latest webinars and videos. And you can visit quark.com for more information about QPP Next Gen and get a demo if you wanted to. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching.